Hello, so this is Nitin Dahad with the Times. I'm here at CES in Las Vegas with Matt Johnson, Senior Vice President of IoT at Silicon Labs. Hi, Matt. Hi, Nitin. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Good. So I um, wanted to talk a little bit about what you're doing both here at CES but also generally. Sure. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the market opportunity in smart homes um, and you know, what Silicon Labs' role is in that. Sure. Uh, the smart home space has become incredibly exciting. It's been talked about for years and there's certainly a huge market already but if you walk around CES this year and you look at what's in the news you can see that that space is getting momentum like it's never had before and with some of the recent changes and collaboration like CHIP and Open Z-Wave that are happening we're going to see an acceleration in the space like we've never seen and it's going to enable things that are you know, really exciting. And how we fit into that is we provide the underlying technology behind almost every IoT wireless standard that's out there. And when you say underlying technology, that's the connectivity and... Yeah, so Silicon Labs provides what's starting at the silicon, software stack, uh, the complete solution, even the module to give a turnkey solution to someone who wants to create a wireless connection. And if you think about the IoT, it's about connecting things. Yes. We have the solutions that are complete to connect things to the internet or the cloud. Great. And uh, I know that you know, with the IoT and um, smart homes, the reason why it's not taken off so far is yeah, there's been some challenges. And one of them, you know, for example, interoper interoperability. I can never say that word. Can you tell me a little bit about the challenges? Yeah, it's, it has been a challenge. And I think it's, it's two sides of a coin. Like I said earlier, it's getting really exciting because we're starting to see that momentum. Uh, that momentum is possible or enabled by some of the challenges that we're addressing, like interoperability. Uh, so to be specific, if you went back historically, there's a lot of challenges for developers to move quickly uh, across competing standards. There's a lot of challenges for consumers. When you go and say, hey, I want to have, you know, start a smart home or uh, complement a smart home, it's difficult to know what's going to work with what. And if I go buy this, is it going to work with this? Or how do I keep it up and running? That is what the industry is addressing. Uh, really right now, and it was announced coming into the show, uh, standards like the uh, connected home over IP, opening up Z-Wave is really a, a big step towards giving customers, developers the ability to make all these things work together, which will ultimately give consumers a better experience, which will ultimately allow the smart home to move and grow even faster. Okay, great at a high level, so step back one. What is Connected Home over IP and, and, and the Z-Wave initiative? Can you explain Absolutely. a little bit? Absolutely. So the chip or, or Connected Home over IP is really the industry coming together after having been through this over the last few years and saying, look, we've done well, but we could do so much better if we made this easier across all these different companies, across all these different developers. How might we do that? So instead of going at it saying, look, we want all the wireless technologies to compete with each other, because everyone wants a, well, which one wins? Let's put an application layer on top of those that really allows them to work together and allows what's out there and what's to come to work together in a seamless, reliable way that's fast, it's secure, and it allows the market to actually do something it hasn't been able to do. So that's happening, and to see the scale of companies, the type of companies, all of us coming together like this, it's a pretty big deal in the industry, and it's a great sign about what's to come. Now, from what I understand from that, uh, it's not about putting the um, common standard within the, the chip or the hardware, it's actually at an IP layer level, isn't it? Yes, so uh, the one thing that's been out there for a long time is, you know, people always love to see a fight and, you know, who's going to win this and what's going to happen. And where we've gotten to is it's not about a wireless protocol as much about what's on top of it and getting them to work together and saying, you know, from a customer perspective, how can I make sure these things will all work? So we're approaching it from two directions. There's the alliance and standards approach, which is going to be critical, I think. And the other thing that Silicon Labs can do as a company that is really unique in the industry, we can provide one solution that will allow all these standards to work together. So if you imagine yourself as an end device provider for the IoT, and you want to say, I want to have one device on the shelf that I can tell my customers, it's going to work with whatever's out there, and you can buy it with confidence, we can do that. 
And we're the only company out there that can provide that type of solution across, you know, 15.4 sub gigahertz, all the wireless standards, BLE, and put it all together in one solution, which is a big deal for the industry. Multi-protocol, that's pretty good. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the um, recent things that Silicon Labs has announced and you know, initiatives? I mean, obviously, we, we just talked talk sure, about chip. But yeah. Tell me a few other there's, sort of new there's, products. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So I'll, I'll touch on one that's uh, more alliance-based and one that's more uh, product-based. Product uh, from alliance perspective, we just announced recently that uh, Z-Wave, which is a wireless protocol standard that has been very successful in the smart home, uh, we are going to open that up. It's been, for the most part, for lack of a better term, a closed or proprietary standard that's done really well over the years, but we decided as part of the themes we were just talking about, to open that up is going to allow it to do its next phase of growth. Explain what you mean by opening it up. Absolutely. Yeah, that can mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is we had basically this uh, solution that was only uh, supplying silicon and software from Silicon Labs, and then literally has hundreds of members of the alliance, which are end customers that are utilizing this technology. Uh, in this case, opening it up means we're going to allow other silicon suppliers uh, to also participate in this and make the uh, board and alliance more self-steering. And we believe that will actually serve the industry better and allow it to accelerate because having it closed actually was really helpful to get it up and running. Uh, you can move fast, you can get things done quickly, but then to get the next wave of growth, you really do need it so everyone can participate and that it's open and people don't feel like they're stuck uh, with only one supplier. So the analogy with the software world is like providing that API uh, that everybody can access. Yes. And from a product perspective, uh, we just announced our latest uh, BLE solution. So BLE's gotten a lot of attention at CES this year, particularly uh, with 5.2 and BLE Audio. We just announced a solution, which is a BLE solution that is incredibly low power. We're talking coin cell battery life of up to 10 years. Wow. So just to put that in perspective, and it really is ideal for uh, BLE applications that are end nodes. So it can support BLE mesh, it can support uh, BLE AOX, uh, and if you think about that, that allows really accurate motion tracking. Uh, so specifically within a meter of accuracy. Mm. So think about what we're talking about. We're talking about a solution that is really small, really cost effective, it's secure, and ultra low power for up to 10 years. And just, just to give you an idea of, of how crazy that is, if you were making a tracking device that was focusing on asset tracking or a tag, mm. uh, we could do a total solution, including the full bill of materials in the device, for under a dollar. That's, That's how much things have really accelerated in this space and what these types of solutions can do. And the value of that is Silicon Labs is focused on wireless IoT for the last decade. And when we're putting the ability we have in RF and really a total solution using our software stacks and put that into a solution, we can do stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Coming back to the ecosystem, working with you know, all the uh, big players, what's going to happen in 2020? It's an incredibly dynamic time, but also really exciting time uh, in the smart home space. With the amount of industry players that are really starting to collaborate and work together, it's going to allow an acceleration of adoption of devices and really an acceleration of the IoT space in general. Uh, one thing that we're doing because of that is uh, we've been sharing uh, this week at CES that we're going to be sponsoring a basically a conference or an event called the Works With event this summer in Austin, Texas. And what this is going to be is really around the smart home and bringing the industry together to really help accelerate all these things that are happening out there and help our customers navigate them. So to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, talking you know, over 600 customers and keynotes from companies like Google, Amazon, Comcast, and participation by these companies. Because what we have happening is the ability to bring together uh, these wireless protocols at a common application layer. And we have standards that are opening up. And we have this acceleration that's happening. And to provide a forum for our customers who are sitting there saying, how do I make all this work, right? If my goal is to say, I'm developing an IoT end device and I want it to connect to these three places, 
how might I do that? How do I do that quickly? How do I do that reliably? How do I do that securely? That's what we're doing. And it ties in, and you know, come back now to CES, I mean, the theme here is connected intelligence. So yes. it uh, ties all of that in, and then you can put that in, but it lasts for 10 years or whatever. Yes. Is that right? Yep, absolutely, and, it, and it's exciting, right? Because you see, you know, the big picture, you see this acceleration in adoption of end devices, and you see this really just amazing amount of new end devices that are coming out that we see when we walk around the show floor and you see these announcements, it's exciting. And I personally believe that it's really hard to predict what's going to happen because we know the amount of connections that are going to go up, we know the amount of end devices are going to increase, but what they're going to enable is really tough to call, right? Mm. Because it's hard to imagine having this many connected devices with access to the cloud. And what that's going to enable in the next decade, I think is just going to be amazing. That's very good. Well, that's a very good note to end on. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely, thank you.